We've seen middleweight Derek Brunson. Derek, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me. First question will come from Ezekiel Bergonzi with Somos MMA. Your line is open. Hello, Derek. How are you? Uh, what's up? I'm good. My first question is, how do you feel going to this fight? Do you feel like you are being underestimated by the five fight uh, with streak record of Kevin Holland? Um, it doesn't really matter to me. I haven't really been focused on all that stuff. My focus for this camp has been preparation and worrying about myself. Um, I'm ranked number seven. He ranked number 10. He's trying to take my spot. So uh, it's just business to me. And how do you prepare for this fight? Uh, the same as always, you know, just worried about bettering myself. Uh, I was down at Sanford MMA for four weeks training with, with those guys down there getting ready for the fight. Uh, we had a great camp, and here we are. You have a three-win streak, so how do you think that a, a Kevin, a beating Kevin Hola will put you on the rankings? Uh, just me doing what, holding my spot, you know. Um, these young, hungry guys, they're coming for my spot. They're coming to take where I'm at, you know. So I got to hold my spot. And with an impressive victory, I believe I can leap a lot of guys in the rankings and really can put myself in the thick of things uh, with the title. Uh, talking about the title, uh, Israel Adesanya fought uh, Sham Blachowicz for the light heavyweight championship, and he lost. So how do you think that will affect the middleweight division? Do you think that uh, Israel Adesanya defeat was better for the, the, the 185 division or not? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, my focus is only at division at 185. So whatever it takes for me to work myself closer to the title, that's what I'm focused on. He went up there and tried to get to 205. He didn't succeed. Now he's back at 85, and that's looked like that looked like where he's going to stay. So uh, that's where the fights will line up. My last question is: uh, Kevin Holland said a couple of minutes ago that he sent you a lot of DMs. Uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that uh, that is a strategy to get into your head, or do you think that he's just like that and it doesn't matter for you? Uh, he tried to. He tried to get in my head. Uh, Kevin Hall is just a class clown, you know. So I let him do his thing. You know, he's he's a class clown. He tried to be funny, but it doesn't matter. You can talk. You cannot talk. You can be silent. You can be outspoken. But the way I'm coming to knock people out, you know, I'm coming to get finishes. So that's not going to change one way or the other. You know, I'm I'm coming to get wins. So um, I'm focused on the task at hand, and that's that. Thank you very much, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. We'll take our next questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Derek, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Thank you. Derek, so you've got this nice win streak together, and I heard you address this a little bit about how the fans can be up and down depending on a fighter's last performance. When you had that rough patch, you know, two and four, how did you filter out that noise to just focus on working on yourself? Because I know it can't always be easy, especially when you're in a public job like fighting on TV. Well, um, a couple of those losses was just kind of not being properly pre prepared. And also I got a little unlucky with the judges. So, you know, uh, you just got to stay focused on the task at hand. And that's what I, I tend to do. Um, you're only as good as your last fight, as as the fans will see it in MMA, you know, and combat sports. So I always focus on that next fight and really focus on that one and taking care of that one. With the, you've obviously got so many weapons. You're wrestling. You're very durable. You're very dangerous with your power. So when you change teams and everything, how much is it an X's and O's standpoint in terms of learning just uh, your craft? And how much of it is mental in terms of turning the corner like this? It's a little bit of everything, you know. It's it's about, you know, just properly executing, game planning. Um, more so, it's just being pushed, having the bodies, the people training full-time who at the highest level to push you. I think I heard an interview this week. GSP was saying, you know, once you become really famous, make a lot of millions, um, it's easy to lose your edge. And the only way to lose to get your edge back is to get challenged. And you have to step away from your team and get challenged by guys who are not, you know, trying to – baby you or take care of you as guys that's coming to get you you know that's going to push you in training and stuff like that and that's at that level to ultimately bring out the best in you 
Was there a moment where it just kind of clicked? Like, you know, you talked about it, you know, being more patient in there and executing the way you need to. Was there a moment where you realized, like, you know what, it's coming to me now. It's just feeling more natural to do that now. Uh, no, it was just more looking at myself in the mirror, like, all right, stop being stupid. You know, stop being out there rushing everything. Take your time, slow it down, articulate. Don't be out here being in a rush. You know, you got X amount of time. You could knock somebody out in the same amount of time by setting it up, opposed to just trying to rush them, you know. So this is just about, you know, growing in the sport and really embracing being a martial artist. In the next few weeks, it's obviously a very big month for the middleweight division. You know, have you thought about, you know, who and when, you know, you'd want your next fight to be, or are you just pushing that aside for now? Um, I've seen, it, it's been a, it'd be kind of like a bad thing to kind of locking on any one person because things have been changing. Um, Costa was supposed to fight Whitaker. That fell through and Gaston stepped in. So things are constantly changing. So the the best thing to do in this division is kind of focus on the fight at hand and then after that, see what's up. Hey, thank you, Derek, and best of luck. Thank you. We'll go next to Jim Barcelone with the Miami Herald. Your line is open. Yeah, thank you so much. Sanford MMA, Henry Hooft and everybody there in here in South Florida, just incredible. And I wonder if that correlates. You've won your last three fights. And was that when, before that first of those three, when you started with Stanford MMA, how much of a connection has it been with your growth with Stanford MMA in your last few fights? I hope I have the timeline right. Well, yeah, so I started, my win streak uh, is indicative of the time that I've been at Stanford. So. The first fight, I was at Sanford, second and third. So we're on a three-fight winning streak ever since I started training down there. So it's just good bodies down there, good coaches down there. Everybody's pushing, and, yeah, it's, it's good vibes. So every day, you know, you're in the gym making gains or understanding where you're at and things you need to improve on. And if I can, how did that connection start for you to get to Sanford and just getting with them and being able to be there? How did that work for you to get there? Well, I I knew a lot of the guys. You know, I've been in this game for a while. Um, I saw Henry Hoof at a lot of events, and he would always, you know, speak to me, say what's up, even, you know, when I was with another team. He would just say hi, you know, say good job, or, you know, he's just a really friendly guy, you know, and I seen how all these guys had clean striking, and it was close to home. So, you know, I was like, you know, that's an opportunity I got to jump on. Really want to go out and train with those guys. I went down for a week to try it out, and then, you know, I was hooked, definitely, and then I came back for camp, and I've been there since, you know. What has it been like, too, working with the other fighters and everyone there? Because you mentioned, I mean, I know South Florida just overall, not just Sanford, but there is a lot of good fighters and coaching down here. What has it been like for you to be involved in that and just see your game elevate like that and then gaining that confidence? Yeah, it's, this game is always changing. And, you know, um, the guys that I came in this sport with, a lot of guys are not fighting still, you know, so... All these young guys that a lot of people don't know a lot about who are going to be stars, you know, within a year or two, it's good to have these young guys pushing you every day, you know. It just gets you ready for these big fights. And were you there when it was Hard Knocks 365 and then made the transfer over to Sanford MMA? So my question on that part is, okay, my question is, what do you think of the new facility? (laughs) Yeah, I was there at Hard Knocks 365. Uh, it was a, it was a sweat sweat place, you know. I used to love cutting weight there or getting ready for fights because my weight was real low. But uh, the not, the new place, Sanford MMA, is phenomenal. It's like state of the art. They got doctors, they got a recovery room, sauna, nice everything. It's just like you know, they have everything for a, that a fighter would need to recover, to get healthy. Like one guy blew his knee out, and they have doctors. He got a, went in, got a surgery through Sanford MMA, and it was done. You know, so they have their own doctors and everything. So it's a state of the art facility. And I believe that that's going to be the new wave of MMA, you know, those these big gyms that have everything. Yeah, one-stop shop. That is so true. And for you, I was looking at, my last question is, I was looking about your background prior to MMA, and you were a competitive cheerleader as well as an accomplished amateur wrestler. And I'm just, your thoughts on competitive cheerleading as a sport? Yeah, I wish I was still in it. Uh, Man, competitive cheerleading, I'll, I'll tell everybody, that was when I was like 17, 18, man. We got to hang out with girls all the time, so we were like little rock stars. <laughs> it was fun. But um, I came into wrestling with a really strong core. That's, you know, kind of what it helps with uh, the sport of cheerleading, you know, tossing girls up and doing a lot of flips and stuff like that. So 
Yeah, that was definitely a fun time in my life. Well, I know I said last question, just real quick. I'm curious then, we could have saw you on Saturday afternoons on the sidelines of the big football games then, right? Uh, nah, no, no, we did more of the stuff that was on ESPN, like the competitive, like UCA. I know, I think competitive chilling is pretty big in Florida. They have a team uh, called Top Gun. They were popular whenever, about 2002, back then. They were out of Miami, so. And you're right, because in Orlando, they always would have the national championships for the competitive cheerleading every year over by Disney. Yes. Right. Listen, all the best. Thank you so much. Keep doing your thing with Sanford MMA as well. Thank you. We'll take our next questions from Ryan McCarthy with Low Kick MMA. Your line is open. Hey, Derek, can you hear me all right? Yes, I hear you. Good, good. How's it going, man? Um, just a couple questions here. I mean, um, you're in a, a pretty chaotic middleweight division here, so... Um, you know, the, is there a certain name um, that, that comes to mind if you were to win on Saturday or anything like that? No, I'm just focusing. Just the, things are changing so much in this weight class, you know. Like, this is the best weight class in the UFC, the most exciting, a lot of stars, you know. Um, so, yeah, things are changing. So it's, it's, it's better to just focus on the one fight, and then right after that you can get to the next fight, you know. So, like, yeah, just focus on this fight first. For sure, for sure. And and how do you see uh, Saturday's fight with Kevin going? Do you do you expect to do you expect to finish? Do you expect the full five rounds? What are you thinking? I expect to finish. You know, I'm gonna take my time, set things up. If he want to come early, you know, I, I got something for that too. But yeah, I'm just gonna take my time and look look to get the finish and get the win. However, we get it. For sure. And uh, any specific cheat meal you get after after a W on Saturday? I don't know. Some cookies, some insomnia cookies. That'd be great. <laughs> Love it, love it. Um, well, best of luck, man. Appreciate it, and uh, best of luck on Saturday, man. Thank you. And we'll take our final questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Your line is open. Hi, Derek. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, the first thing I want to ask you is, you're fighting in the small octagon. Do you think that uh, will give you an extra advantage because you are a wrestler? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, octagon is octagon. I'm fighting anywhere. You know, yeah. Sorry, I got hiccups. But um, you have to get in. You have to work your way in. You have to be smart. Be patient. Um, set th set things up. So big big octagon, small octagon. I'm just gonna do my thing regardless. You know, I'm not really. I mean, I know I came in as a wrestler, but I'm looking to just go out and get the job done with the hands on with the wrestling. For sure. Uh, this is your second fight in, on the pandemic, so. Do you expect to be more active in this year? Yeah, for sure. You know, definitely want to stay active, get as many fights as I can, and uh, really keep working my way down towards the title shot. Okay, and what are your thoughts of Kevin Holland as an opponent? I think Kevin Holland is a guy who likes to talk. He's rangy, he's long, he comes to get it. He's, he's aggressive, but uh, he's breakable, you know? So you're going to get him to that breaking point and uh, get the job done. Uh, for a long time, you uh, have are the gatekeeper in this division you're fighting uh, the young and uh, up commerce fighters so uh, are you okay with that uh, fighting and proving that they are just a uh, high train well i mean i don't know um if i'm in this i'm in this position where um i was asking for the number two guy for this fight and the guy didn't want to fight you know he kind of did he turned on the fight so it, no it wasn't really anybody else available so Kevin Holland was the fight that was offered, so we took it. You know, in this fight game, you got to fight. It's either wait or fight. And it's a thing of being active or not active. So we took the fight just so, you know, we stay active. And it's a fight that we can get up for, we can get excited about. It's a lot of hype on the fight, and that's where we're at. You know, I don't, I don't really play into the gatekeeper or anything like that. I don't even know what that really means. But I guess that's a nice way of saying you stay relevant all these years, so. For sure. Uh this division is very stacked. You can fight a lot of good fighters. Uh, a lot. There is a lot of fighters with a lot of hype, a lot of fans. So if you get the victory, uh, who would you like to face next? Um, I don't know. I'll probably figure that out right after I get the win. So, yeah, we just focus on this fight, locked in on this fight, and then we'll figure out everything afterwards. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Derek, and good luck on the fight. Thank you.